Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. We are joined here by Holly Dirksen, field crop pathologist with Manitoba Agriculture, a frequent guest here on Real Agriculture <laughs> lately, Holly, uh, talking about uh, Perticillium wilt, again, this uh, disease that has been confirmed just this past year in, uh, in canola in Manitoba, the first case of it in, uh, in Canada. How should producers react to uh, the finding of this, uh, this new disease here in North America? Right, so this is obviously, you know, a new disease to us and obviously to farmers. Yes, we have dealt with this particular disease in other crops, but this pathogen in canola um, is brand new. And, and to be honest, the reaction at this point has been much what I expected, where there hasn't been much uptake because we are completely unfamiliar with it. It's, you know, being like, well, I don't know what you're talking about, so <laughs> I'm not too concerned. So at this point, that's really you know, an okay mindset to have. We don't know if it's how widespread it is. At this point, we are treating it as an isolated case. And as more information becomes available in the spring, um, as we do more surveys, perhaps there'll be more information and it will be hitting closer to home for growers. Um, or we don't find it anywhere else and, and we can manage it in an isolated case and, and perhaps it no longer be a problem in Manitoba. So agronomically, yeah. talking about managing, what are the processes that you follow. Right. Be. So unfortunately fungicides are, are not effective. Um, foliar or seed treatment um, against this disease. There are also no resistant varieties at this point in time, although it, it has been a common disease um, in Northern Europe for many years and obviously they, they have been looking for resistance. It, it's a tough one to get resistance for. I imagine because it's in, in Canada now, most likely more research dollars will be poured into it um, within Canada looking for resistance as well, especially, especially if we find it to be a widespread problem. Um, so our main recommendations at this point, following what they've done in Europe, is a longer rotation in, in canola, especially if you find it at low levels. So they say a one in four rotation just to help manage the levels, keep them at low concentrations. It won't eradicate it because it does live for 10 to 15 years in the soil, um, but it can help manage concentrations, similar to what we recommend for club root. And then the biosecurity practices, it's soil borne, so managing the transfer of soil and where things are coming in off the farm, um, making sure you know where the sources are. What does it look like in the field of farmers? Right, so the best time to scout is um, after harvest or right around the swathing timing, same time you're scouting for black lake, possibly with sclerotinia. Um, in the field, initially it'll show up. If your plant's still green, you might notice some longitudinal lesions along one side of the stem. Um, that's actually kind of indicative of wilt, also fusarium wilt can look like that and that's actually what we initially thought was happening um, in this particular field. Um, but what's specific about verticillium, the outer layer of the stem peels back to reveal a bunch of microsclerotia, which kind of appears as a black peppering of spots. Black leg, we all talk about the black peppering of spots, but that's on the surface of the stem. This is actually much later in the season, you know, even just getting the stubble after harvest. These plants can often appear a little more gray and then look for that peeling back of the epidermis. It happens naturally. You don't need to peel back the epidermis to look for it. And then the black peppering of spots. There are pictures um, on our website, Manto Air Culture, and Real Egg has posted some pictures as well. Any of the, the management techniques that they've been implemented in, in Europe would be similar to what we've done for the for for club root in Canada? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Sweden's a lot, and Europe, Northern Europe, a lot different th than Canada. There, we can make comparisons um, between our industries, but even if it is here and maybe in more than one location, it's hard to say what's going to happen from this point forward because, you know, we are, we are the guinea pigs. So we're, we're learning um, as we move forward. So uh, it may not become the issue that, that it has been in Northern Europe. And they have been able to manage it and, and grow successful as a big crop. So at this point, it should be on growers' radar and stay tuned, I guess. For yeah, basically, yeah, stay tuned. For our surveying efforts in the spring, we're educating agronomists and growers as to what it looks like and hopefully um, if it isn't some other fields, we're able to ID it at low concentrations before it's causing yield loss. Thank you all.